<laughs> so, Flash's five-episode arc, Armageddon, has come to a close. And even though the series, for some reason, isn't starting proper until March, they decided to shove this out a few months after Season 7 wrapped. The logic there is non-existent, but that's the least of the problems. Yeah. I am not a fan of this show, and never have been. And, while well, Season 7 was pretty much rock bottom for most people, really, Armageddon mm, showed signs of potential. Then again, sort of the Godspeed arc, and that wasn't good. Yeah, this was pretty awful. It wasn't as bad as Season 7. I think all five of these episodes were probably more watchable than all of Season 7. But it's still pretty bad. I don't th I'm don't. i among the people that say this show has never been good. I saw some episodes of Season 1 recently, and they don't hold up. The dialogue's terrible, the acting's off from most of the cast, the effects look terrible, the action is atrocious. And the story is just a bunch of filler trying to build up to a conclusion. That just sets up another filler-heavy season. But this one was more of a self-condensed story. Think of this as a, as a... Let me see, 45... 100 and... Oh, I don't care. Um, 160, 200-minute long movie. Still shorter than a Zack Snyder film, but this is far better than a Zack Snyder film. But... Let's get into it. This is actually my second attempt at filming this, but it wasn't because of technical issues or because the footage got lost or destroyed or something. Not any of these technical issues I've had many times in the past, but just because there's a lot of stuff I focus too much on and there's some things I forgot to talk about entirely. So I'm going to try to keep this brief. So especially because the light is making sound, I don't know if the mic is picking that up. But, yeah, let's get into it. So, episode one is kind of just filler. Like, and nothing happens until the 35-minute mark or something like that, where Despero finally shows up and it, and tells the Flash about how he causes Armageddon. And then the episode ends. In episode two, after the end, he, prom he promises that Flash will lose his mind that day and... He does, due to a bunch of weird shit happening. Like, he he gets suspended from the CCPD due to some shit that's not explained well. Um, he forgets Joe died. Yeah, apparently they killed Joe off off-screen, but we'll get to that in a bit. And a, a bunch of other sh weird shit happens because of some psychic who's... Uh, Similar to Psyche from last year, the, um, the, the telepath, obviously, and similar to Seal, but she makes the person basically go insane. So, yeah, that episode sucks, too. Episode 3... Oh, Barry calls in... I forgot what it was. Barry calls in Black Lightning to invoke the Injustice Protocol, which means if one of them goes rogue, that they will have to... that one of the other heroes will be forced to take away their powers. This is a really lazy reference to the actual Injustice storyline, and you know how much I like the Injustice video game and the comic series. Go watch my review of the awful animated Injustice film. That was possibly one of my most rage-filled reviews in, reviews in a while. And, yeah, th this is just lazy. They should have just gone all out and done Injustice. I don't think they'll do that because the CW is not bold enough to do that. Because they, they've already screwed up Flashpoint. They already screwed up Trial of the Flash. I don't need them screwing up Injustice again. And the rest of the... And everybody else is just trying to find Barry. That's the episode. And it ends and leads into episode 4. Where Eobard Thawne has created Reverse Flashpoint. Where he basically has the Flash's life and Barry is Reverse Flash. This is a very interesting concept. When I heard about it, I thought this could be damn awesome. The show has never done anything so out there like this. It's dealt with multiverses and time travel, and nothing has been as bold and unique as this. They, they did Flashpoint, which is a direct, which 
this kind is an adaptation, a loose adaptation though, of the well-known comic book series. There was an animated film, and the new Flash movie is adapting that storyline as well. Though, also taking many liberties with it, which I'm fine with. Doesn't have to follow the comics as long as you do something well with it. But the mo major problem with that Flashpoint was is that it wasn't a bad episode, but it was only one episode. They wasted that. Even people who defend the show know that was a terrible idea. They should have let it go a few episodes. Same problem here. This interesting alternate reality should have been multiple episodes. Like that Elseworlds crossover where Barry and Oliver switch places. It could have been four episodes on its own of Barry running around his reverse Flash trying to fix everything and Eobard loving his life as the Flash. That would have been such a neat arc all on its own. But again, I feel like this was an inside joke. Like, oh, everybody complained about how we did Flashpoint in one episode and kind of wasted it. Well, why don't we do the same thing here just to troll people? It felt like a troll move. But I did think the ending was interesting to where Flash has to cause Armageddon to travel back in time and fix the timeline. Because Thawne fucked with it like six or seven times. Which makes me wonder where the hell are the time wraiths? They haven't shown up since season three. I know they killed off Dar uh, Black Flash in a very insultingly stupid way. But where the hell? But the time wraiths should still be there. They haven't shown up in five years. Where the hell are they? Didn't happen. They didn't show up when Barry created Flashpoint and now... They're nowhere to be found after Thawne fucked with the timeline a good five or six times at once. Come on. And so, yeah, that was an interesting idea. And then the last episode, like, something that happened with Crisis on Infinite Earths, that everybody thought the first three episodes were just kind of whatever. Then everyone thought the fourth episode was fantastic. I didn't, but whatever. And then they thought the fifth episode was shit because four should have been the finale to that arc. Same thing's kind of true here. Four should have been the finale... But at least this episode, is, this fifth episode was a little less insulting. Partly because it's not Legend of Tomorrow, which is a much more inherently goofy show, even though The Flash is ridiculously silly at some points. Where Eobard Thawne is being erased from existence, and they have to ponder whether or not to save him, or let him disappear. And Despero is pushing for Flash to just let him die. And so was I, because this character has been overused and ruined, and I'll get more into that in a bit. But for now, so I've gotten all the stories, they, they kind of suck, let's get into the characters. For one thing, the acting has gotten more, the much, the acting has gotten worse, I swear to god. Every performance is lifeless and flat, even have good actors like Daniel Panabaker and Jesse Lee, and not Jesse Lee, Jesse L. Martin, their performances are just really flat and one-dimensional. All the other actors I just say, eh, they're uh, they're not terrible, oh, or bad. Grant Gustin is so bland in this. I don't know why. I have said that he has his moments in The Flash. Normally, he's just kind of, eh, he's fine. But he has his moments of greatness. This entire thing, he seems like he's on autopilot. He's the he's the reason the show is still going, because he wants to keep doing it. Bad business model, but whatever. So, why is he giving, t like, he's he's going half-assed here. But, yeah, all the other ones are terrible, too. Cisco is missing. Thank God, let that actor do something else. Because he has wanted to leave this show for years. But now Chester is basically the new Cisco, And he's not funny or charming. He's annoying. I've never liked Allegra, and her actress is atrocious. She can't act for shit. She can't emote to save her life. And they added a really shitty side story that tried to push a relationship between... Chester and Allegra that was never set up before, wasn't set up very well in this little set of episodes either, came out of nowhere, and was a complete waste of time. Ryan Choi shows up in the Reverse Flashpoint with a new a with an Adam suit that looks like the Flash and Reverse Flash suits from the new seasons that looks like shit. I know people like the new Flash suit, I think it's atrocious, I think it looks ridiculous. That cowl, especially in this one, the cowl is too big for J Gustin's head. It looks like... People said the season 4 suit looked pretty baggy on him. The cowl is too big now. And not to mention Tom Cavanaugh. He looked badass in the, the leather suit that he had for the first 7 seasons. Now he has the spandex kind of thing that matches Barry's new suit. He looks ridiculous in both the Flash and Reverse Flash suits. He looks ridiculous. Gustin pulls it off a bit better probably because he's been in that suit for, for a few years now. So 
He's so I'm probably getting used to it. Kavanaugh looks ridiculous. I don't think I'll ever get used to that, and I may not have to, for reasons that, for reasons so I'll get into because. Episode 5 ended with them taking away Thon's speed instead of letting him disappear, for bullshit I'll get into later. Cecile's just kind of here. Doesn't really do much. Uh, again, Caitlyn's just around. Iris is just around. I still fucking hate Iris. This, this little arc didn't help her at all. Uh, I've already mentioned I hate Allegra. Chester, I used to like Chester. Like, when he starts introducing him, like... Okay, like, I like the episode, the one with the 90s from last year, because it was the two funny characters, Chester and, Chester and Cisco working off each other, that worked. But now that he has to do all the comedy on his own, it fails. He's not funny, he's obnoxious. And, alright, so I don't... Thawne is completely ruined in this, but, again, but I'll get into that in a second. Despero... I got nothing to say about Despero... I, I get his motivation, like, he's trying to save the planet. Like, okay, that's a great motivation. He doesn't have a personality, though. He has no personality traits I can latch on to. His backstory is rushed. It's just kind of in a little exposition. There's a ton of exposition in this, because it takes place months after season seven. Especially in the very the beginning of the first episode, there are there is a shitload of exposition that's, that's cringy, not natural in the slightest, and just out of nowhere... But I've been putting it off. Let's get to Thawn. Thawn is a character people really loved in season one. I thought he worked. I thought he was serviceable as a villain. He still wasn't overly compelling. He was pretty intimidating. But and his backstory was actually pretty interesting. He wanted. He was obsessed with the Flash. Tried to become the Flash, and he succeeded in giving himself speed. But once he developed time travel. In his travels, he discovered his destiny was to not become the Flash, but to become the Flash's adversary, and he accepted his his destiny. That's interesting. But they throw all that out the window in the last episode here. Thawne's now motivation is... That he's now just some petty asshole. He went from someone who learned his destiny wasn't what he wanted to be, but he accepted it. And he's stuck now being this monster, this evil per. He even knows he's evil, but it was his destiny and he accepted it. Now he's just some petty asshole. They, no, no, they also ruined Joe in this too, because he comes back in the last episode because of fucking course he does. And I like seeing Joe. I like Joe. He's the one character who's remained likable throughout all the seasons, but then they... Screw him up by having him chastise Barry and Iris for considering letting Thawne disappear. Yeah, I get it, they're heroes and their job is to protect people, but when this is a character who not only killed you, asswipe, but killed Barry's mother multiple times, does everything he can to kill the Flash, and even said, he, he said, what will happen once we find a way to keep you from disappearing, he says, be doing what doing. I'll be continuing my life's work, finding new ways to kill you. What is the logic here? I know they end up doing the Avatar Last Airbender thing, which I figured they would even before they said the, but before they said the solution, I knew it was gonna be. They weren't gonna kill him. They were gonna defeat him by taking away his speed. That's exactly what happened. The final fight with Despero was anticlimactic as all fuck, and I should probably get to the elephant of the room, which isn't really the elephant, it's all they pushed in the marketing. The gold boots. My theory of how they were going to get gold boots. I don't really like to talk about my theories because, honestly, I don't like to theorize in general, but my idea for this was that during the final fight, he was going to be fighting Thawne instead. And during the fight, he was going to give himself an upgrade but and create the boots out of lightning. Uh, they show lightning construct in both season six and seven with the stupid lightning swords and the lightning whip and all that other crap. But in the comics, they multiple times they speedsters use their lightning to make suits for themselves. There was even a time where Barry or not Barry Wally West lost his ability. Speaking of which, where the fuck is Wally West? He has not shown up in two seasons. He wasn't around for the Godspeed arc for some reason, and he's still not around. Where is he? I like Wally. But, whatever. That, that just occurred to me, and I needed to get that out. 
But in the comics, there's a time where Wally West loses his ability to walk. And he uses speed force energy to create a suit that allows him to run. I assumed that Barry would be making the boots out of lightning, and that would kind of give him a speed boost. Because he gets one, like, every fucking season, so I assumed that would give him the boost he needs to defeat Thawne once and for all. Nope, Chester just makes them off screen. What? And they don't do anything. It's not like it's some enhanced... It's not like they're, like, extra protected or, like, they give him a boost or anything. I don't think. So, the presence and... The marketing pushing the fact that, hey, we gave him the gold boots, happy now? There's also the fact that they gave Iris red hair in this, which, I yeah, she had red hair in the comics, but she was already the wrong casting choice, because she looks nothing like Iris, she doesn't act like Iris, either. But she already doesn't look like her, so giving her the red hair eight seasons in isn't gonna help. And giving Barry the gold boots eight seasons in isn't gonna do anything. Should have given him them first season, but they... Refused to do it, again, I assumed as a troll move. And they finally did it, but they did it in a very half-assed way. The action in this is terrible. Every fight ends in the most anticlimactic fashion. The special effects, I swear, get worse. The The lightning trail looks even worse. Like They, they realize that they can't do human faces in full CGI with the budget they have after the first two seasons um, had some shall we say, uncomfortable-looking CGI effects on the faces. So, whenever they have to fully CGI a human, they don't show the face. So, at least they figured that out. Fully rendered CGI humans still don't look good, especially when people are running. Often, especially in these episodes, it looks off. Like, most of the time, Barry or Wally, they get, like, a good, solid run. I make fun of Ezra Miller's do doopy, uh, dopey flash run where he runs like this, his legs kind of like shoot out the sides, he flails his arms around like he's swimming. This one, Kavanaugh's running like this. He's running like a freaking gorilla. He, he, I swear to God, he's running like this. And Barry, at some point, after he gets the boots, he's kind of like floating there and, and his arm movement isn't matching up with his legs. He's like leaned over to the point where he looks like he's on a wire. You can tell they didn't give him the treadmill. You can tell a lot of the times in the show, whenever he's got a good solid run, he's just running on a treadmill in front of a green screen. Here, it looks like they hung him on a wire and said, pretend to run. I I don't know what happened. So you, I've seen behind-the-scenes footage of the Justice League movies, and it showed Ezra Miller did not have the treadmill, which is probably why his running form looks so shitty. But here, he looks like he's floating, his arm movements aren't matching up, it looks weird. So, is there anything else to talk about? I don't think there is. This sucked. There was very little good to latch onto. They had a few good ideas, but they squandered them. The acting's still shit. The action's still garbage. The effects still look terrible. Uh, the characters have been botched or just plain obnoxious. Oh yeah, Killer Frost and Showblane are here briefly. Those are two characters I don't want back. I did like what they did with Damien Dark, but that's about it. So, the one character they got right was the one character that's not from The Flash. Wow. So, yeah. I'm not going to score this because it's not the full season. If I did, I'd probably give it an F, but I'm not going to bother. Because, honestly, it's not even worth it. I didn't even wear my Star Labs shirt for this because, honestly, I don't care. I wore it for my Season 7 review. I'll probably wear it when I see The Flash movie next November. But, honestly... This arc was so bad that I couldn't even be bothered to wear it. I couldn't. So, uh, that's all I got. Thank y'all so much for watching. Tell me in the comments, did you give up on this show? Because I'm ready to. I think I'm watching it out of habit now. And I, I know a lot of people have given up watching the show. And I don't blame them in the slightest. And if you are sticking with the show, I'm doing this for reviews. So, why are you still sticking with the show? Do you actually like this garbage fire and... Please tell me why. I can't stand any CW show. And that's all I got for The Flash. And now I have to go finish season three of Titans. I may not like Titans, but it's far superior to this crap.